So we do it a little different this time. I will ask the speakers to come f uh, to the stage first, and then we introduce the host speaker. So the first one will be Günther Bonin. He is the founder of One Earth, One Ocean EV. The second one is Dr. Bernhard Bauske, the Marine Conservation Department of WWF Germany. Where is he? Oh, over there. And the third one is Michael Hofmann, Managing Director of, U of Europhon Europhonix. And the third one, fourth one is Albert Kravosch, co-founder of Blue Bennu. Thank you very much for coming. And <laughs> I will ask Günther Bonin first to do his presentation, please. Uh, Carsten. <laughs> Thank you very much. There is a silent threat lurking in our oceans, one that will change our lives forever. But plastic isn't the real problem. The biggest danger that the planet faces is the belief that someone else is going to save it. Last year, we showed you how a real hero takes on the fight, Gunther Bonin and his team from One Earth, One Ocean. With their catamaran, the Ziku, German for sea cow, they want to fish the plastic out of the ocean. The principle is simple. Plenty of plastic waste is floating on ocean surfaces. To collect the plastic, large nets are dropped to a depth of two meters or less. They worked on the net's construction for one year, and now it's being used for the first time. All of the required approvals and certificates have been attained, and a final test run is starting on the Baltic Sea. Will the test be a success? It's a crucial stage in Gunther Bonin's mission. Everything is on the line. Either the Ziku has its baptism of fire, or the journey ends today. The nets are secured and put into the water. To test the construction, the team throws plastic containers into the sea. The principle works. The Ziku and its crew have made it through the baptism and are now ready to embark on a journey like never before. The prototype is ready to be packed into containers so that it can be shipped to where it's needed most. The next port on this route is Hong Kong. This is because this port city has a garbage problem. An enormous amount of plastic finds its way to the ocean on a daily basis here. While in Asia, the Ziku will not only fight the problem, but also hope to receive money from investors. Only then will she be able to continue her journey, and the team from CD will continue to report. It's high time to take a strong stand against pollution in our oceans. Share this video and spread the message of a true hero. So the second one, Dr. Oops. Second one, Dr. Bernard Bauske, please have your presentation. Or take a microphone, please. Thank you. So, okay, I try to do it in five minutes. Um, just a short explanation about uh, yeah, marine litter and uh, the options we can do uh, against it. So, um, let's see the first. Okay, next. Ah, oh, that's fine. So that's a pro uh, the problem we have. So we have a lot of beaches uh, with a lot of litter uh, lying <coughs> around. And the question is how, how to solve it. Maybe just uh, for introduction. Or here, here you see. OK. Here you see uh, the damages um, which we have. Uh, these are economic damages uh, due to yeah, uh, marine litter lying around uh, on beaches. The uh, tourism sector is affected. Uh, the um, uh, ship uh, sector is affected and other sectors. So we have about uh, 13 billion um, US dollar damages due to marine litter. So we have also uh, think about the economical um, effects of marine litter. Um, but of course, you have the effects on nature. And so that's the reason why I'm sitting here. Um, 
We have uh, the two cases of ingestion of marine litter. You see or you saw the, f the pictures from the birds with the, with the marine litter or the, the plastic in their stomach, but also entanglement by uh, whales or by, by seals. So um, that's what we have to face. Um, it's, it's not a single or a problem for, for a single species. Um, <coughs> around uh, 1,400 species are affected, so it's a real great environmental problem, and uh, we have to deal with it. Um, so, first of all, plastics is in our environment. Uh, around 4.9 billion uh, tons of plastics are lying around, uh, mostly on landfills, but also in, in the environment. So have to, we have to deal with it. Um, and uh, here is an important graph of what you see, that 32% of the packaging is leaving, um, leaving the system. So lying also somewhere around, not only in the oceans. Uh, but also somewhere in the environment, it, it's not biodegradable. So that's a big problem, and every, every year, the huge amount of plastic packaging which is entering the nature and, and the ocean. Um, now here you see the, the reason for the problem is that we have bad waste management in several countries. A focus region, uh, uh, region is Southeast Asia, so there is a lot of uncollected waste or mismanaged waste, and uh, via the rivers, the plastic waste is entering the ocean. So that's what we have to deal with, 80% uh, of the marine litter is coming from land. Um, and uh, at the first stage, we have to deal with waste management, especially in those countries in Southeast Asia. Um, so what are the options or the solution options? First, technical, there's no one-fits-all solution. So for every purpose, we have to think a bit differently. You can prevent packaging, especially single-use use packaging, but also you can recycle some kind of packaging, like the PET bottles. Yes, it's po possible. You can have returnable bottles, but you can, in some cases, also use biodegradable materials for specific purposes, like in the hygienic or in the, in the food sector. So we have to think differently which kind of material we need or why we can uh, achieve a prevention of packaging at all. Uh, but more uh, importantly, I think um, the economic uh, situation is that the waste management is under finance. You cannot pay waste management by sales of compost or recycling. Um, so we have to finance waste management, and this is possible in Germany, but also other Euro uh, European countries by extended producer responsibility. That means that the companies which are introducing packaging into, into the markets have to pay for collection, sorting, and recycling. And that's very important or from my perspective, a crucial point which we have to achieve also in those countries where we do have the problems. So uh, last sentence, what we are doing as WWF is establishing um, in now a model project like in the Mekong Delta in Vietnam, establishing a separate waste collection at household level um, then selling the compost, recycling the plastic, so that the plastic is not no more lying <laughs> around and entering the Mekong River or, or the ocean. And we will duplicate these kind of projects also in the Philippines, Indonesia, Hong Kong, or other countries where we have the focal region. We did this already in the Galapagos Islands where we had also problems about this. But uh, further details I think I can present in the discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now please, Michael Hofmann. Um, you, you also show my presentation? Or yes, we will. Okay, uh, it's okay. You can you can come here when yes, you want if you, if you prefer. I prefer just to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Fine. Thank right you. Right there. Thanks. Yes. Uh, first of all, um, for me, it is a perfect occasion. Um, I'm a pure industry man, and uh, so I'm I'm very happy to meet uh, men like Mr. Bonin and you. So we are highly interested in, in cooperating incorporating with uh, these NGOs. And um, yeah, what do we do? Um, um, we have developed um, um, a technology where we can process really highly contaminated plastic waste, especially household waste, uh, even unsorted. We can produce new plastics. And we have very close to Hamburg and Schwerin, we have a very big pilot plant where we do this and we, we sell these products. We really sell these products, so um, you see it is absolutely necessary that industry is talking with, uh, with organizations like um, World Wildlife Fund and with organizations like Mr. Bonin has, because uh, we have to um, put our information, our knowledge together. And uh, so we have developed a technology um, uh, which is very smart and uh, 
So this is the next chart. This is our, our pilot plant. Uh, it is not, it is really an industry plant and we process uh, there um, 30,000 tons of uh, household waste and it is only waste which has been incinerated in the past. So landfilled or incinerated. So there was no use to use this as a polymer source for new plastics. So it's quite new. And um, yeah, the problem, um, just to summarize the, the, the problem, um, plastic waste is a global problem. It is no more a local problem. And since the Chinese government decided end of last year to uh, finish dramatically, absolutely, the import of plastic waste to China, the real big problem uh, uh, occurred in the public opinion. So even the German Bild Zeitung is reporting each week about plastic waste. So um, this message that plastic waste is a problem is arrived in the population worldwide. And uh, what is the biggest problem? Uh, the producers of plastic waste. And I will explain who are the producers uh, and the, uh, um, the owners of plastic waste. So, so uh, um, the waste management companies or cities, communities, there's a big, big gap between these, uh, these two groups. Yeah? So, so the plastics industry does not know anything about plastic waste, is not familiar with recycling and so on. And the plastic producers, they do not know what to do. So in the past, they exported a lot to China and very, very big volumes are entering into the oceans. We, we have this as a general theme today. And um, the biggest problem is there's a big, big gap between these two groups. And we have to close this gap to find solutions. And um, it is not, not, not an easy way to recover unsorted and pure polluted waste as feedstock for new plastics. It's a difficult challenge because there are no technologies um, which are able to produce in large volumes um, new polymers for new plastics. And um, so um, the technology we developed, so we, we really have a start-up career. <laughs> we started from the early beginnings uh, and until our own operation and plant. But um, that's what we can do, and the most important waste is the so-called post-consumer film waste. So to give you an impression about the, the plastics production worldwide, so um, the plastic production is increasing uh, by 2 to 3 percent per year, and uh, this year we will produce on this planet 340 million tons of plastic. And 40% uh, of these plastic products are so-called post-consumer plastics. So plastics with a, with a short uh, half time. So um, you produce them and four weeks later they are waste. Yeah, 40% so post-consumer plastics. And um, so this enormous volume, 40% of, of um, 340 million, um, is divided in three main plastic groups. It's polyethylene, it's polypropylene, and it's polyethylene terephthalate abbreviation is PET, you know the PET bottle. So these three plastics are over 80% of these so-called post-consumer plastics. And uh, the biggest volume with 100 million tons per year is polyethylene. And polyethylene is mainly used for film, very, very thin film. And this is also the main pollution of the oceans that are these very thin film from plastic bags and so on. So you have a, in Bangladesh you have a flood, yeah, and there are thousands of tons of plastic bags flushing into the oceans. And even Germany is polluting by its rivers and floods and so on, yeah, is uh, polluting the oceans with thousands of tons. Uh, even Germany uh, being uh, uh, the, 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 the main uh, recycling nation <laughs> worldwide, yes. Uh, even we pollute the oceans with these very thin um, film. And um, for us, as industry, we focused on especially this raw material. For us, it's a polymer. It is very difficult to recycle because it has a 
low weight and a big, big surface. That's the main reason why there is not a big or a large volume recycling. And um, but we can do it. And uh, you are, if you are interested, invited to visit our our operation to see this. And uh, so our objective is especially this post-consumer film with this enormous volume. Um, we also can process with our technology any kind of plastic. Uh, also big bags are a big problem. And we just installed, and that's also interesting, we just installed in Denmark an operation for a um, company recycling fish nets. Uh, you know from uh, uh, all publications that there are three in the three main um, uh, themes uh, concerning um, uh, pollution of the oceans by plastics. So one is microplastics, then, then you have these ghost nets, uh, and then you have the polluted beaches with uh, rests of bottles and so on. And um, so the biggest volume anywhere are polyethylene films. They are degraded to microplastics. Yeah? So uh, polyethylene is not stable against ultraviolet radiation. So, so after a very short time, um, these films are degraded to small sizes, also by the waves and sand and so on. So and they are the main volume in quantities of polluting the oceans. The fish nets is not a big volume, but the, 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 uh, w what is happening with them is, is a catastrophe. Yeah? And I, I saw by myself the animals uh, um, with these fish nets, a catastrophe. And so there's a, a Danish company, um, and they uh, collect from NGOs fish nets, and they have a big, big problem, these NGOs, because they have these polyimid uh, fish nets for deep sea fishing. They are a big, big problem, and we just installed with our technology a complete recycling line to produce uh, new polyimid from these fish nets. It's really amazing. So our staff is just in Denmark, and um, bringing this operation to start. Uh, yes, and we, we use a very simple technology. We do not need um, any chemicals. It is so simple that today we ask us, uh, why didn't we have the idea before? <laughs> it's very often so. Um, but it's very simple. It's a simple machine with uh, a rotating disk and with a very special tool. And we really do not need any chemicals. We need very, very low energy. The machine is very, very small and has enormous throughputs. And so we can clean even highly contaminated plastic waste to a purity um, below 10 parts per million residual contamination. This is very, very low. And uh, so this is uh, very important to make new plastics out of it because with contaminations in, the plastic is smelling. No? It's, it must be really clean. Okay. And um, how does it work? It's called hydrodynamic um, friction clinic, or hydrogen. That's also the name of our company here in Hamburg. And uh, it works in a way that we apply friction uh, combined with highly turbulent water flows. And this principle works so excellent. It's our third plant now with this um, fishnet plant. It's the fourth plant we built. and. Um, yeah, we suffered a long time because we didn't get enough waste because all the waste has been exported to China. And um, so with the China exit end of last year, we are in a fabulous situation. So we are very, very happy about this. And uh, so our company is developing now very good. And um, here you see the fish nets. This is um, left is polyimid fish nets. It's grinded by a shredder. and. Uh, these are these fish nets the animals are suffering with. And uh, this is the result after passing this tiny machine you saw. And this is a polyimid fiber with a market value of 900 euros per ton. 900 euros per ton is the market value of this polyimid. And this is, at my personal opinion, the most important solution to begin to solve the, the problem uh, is to create an economic value out of this waste because this will help to, to make more recycling and to use these products. Yeah, and um, so what we developed is we have our technology in containers, in 20 feet containers. So um, this is a nice situation here. 
at sea the DEFCON, no? you are familiar with container transport and so our machinery is in container. And this is a um, washing machine to wash contaminated plastics uh, into process plastics, film waste, um, um, 20,000 tons per year, this machine. And the costs are, are very low. And so we start now installing first machinery in Indonesia, in Malaysia, and uh, are dealing um, also with uh, NGOs and uh, because um, this technology helps to create value on location. If you create value, you can, you can finance collecting systems, collecting schemes to collect the waste. Uh, if you don't have a refinancing for this, it is nearly impossible. Mr. Hoffmann? Yeah, I'm too like long. No? I've, I've yes, please. Right. Okay, yes. Thank you. Okay, fine. So this was it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then I would like to ask Albert Kravosch please, for your presentation. Uh, thank you for having me today. Uh, I'm the CTO of a uh, newly or founding um, company, Blue Benu, and we aim to uh, transform, add value to mixed uh, trash and plastic. And um, we don't want to focus just on the maritime litter, but our technology can go further and process basically any waste uh, that uh, we are producing. And uh, yeah, um, I'm here to basically see which are the limits of uh, our technology because for me it looks really nice. And so um, I'm here to find um, more insights about the whole um, uh, plastic pollution, um, our concurrents, or maybe hopefully um, no competition. <laughs> do you have any kind? Do you have any kind of waste coming out of your process? Do you have any kind of waste coming out of your process? Organic. Organic. Perfect. So we can collaborate. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, incredibly big. Um, and yes, uh, thank you for having me here. And uh, let's talk about more important stuff. <laughs> thank you. Now I'll, I will introduce your host speaker, it's Frank Schweikert. He's a uh, founder of the German Ocean Foundation, the CEO at Global Green Innotech GmbH, and, the organization, uh, and he's doing the organization of the Klimawoche uh, in two weeks in Hamburg here. Week, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, he's, in co co he's in cooperation with CDEFCON. Thank you very much for being here. Yeah, now, thanks, Roland. <laughs> you can sit yeah. over there, take yeah. the micro, <coughs> and tell us something, and I help you with questions if you need anything. Yeah, so welcome everybody yeah. and I'm re really happy that so many people attend here in, in the room and that we have a great uh, great panel, solution orientated, so most of you know, we, we know each other. Um, let me introduce myself a little bit more. I'm working in the plastic field since uh, let's say five years um, with a company who is uh, looking for solutions to identify plastics. This is imp um, important to know where the plastic flow is going, maybe in rivers, maybe in ocean, but it's really, really difficult because we have a lot of different uh, plastic uh, particles and um, the concentration of plastic is really low. So, for example, in the North Sea, we have around um, 25 to 50 plastic particles per ton water, and so it's very difficult to identify. And since one year, I have a second network uh, consisting of um, around um, 15 small companies and uh, seven in research institutions to grab out the plastic of waters. And it's very difficult, so I think we have the, the biggest player in this field, Günther Bonin, here. And I'm very happy he showed us the, the video about uh, Sea Hamster and uh, Seco. <laughs> Yeah, so um, the system will now be that we talk here on the stage a little bit about solutions and uh, for let's say 20 minutes and after that you can think about any more questions to, um, to the panel and um, yeah, Roland will help me to identify your questions and to hear <laughs> and to start the discussion. Yeah, Günther. Um, let's start with you. This is amazing work you did, and um, I know the reason why you did, because we have a common interest. We are both sailors, 
And um, maybe I think it's interesting to tell the story why you, you have been in the computer industry before or in the IT br uh, branch, why you started One Earth One Ocean. Let's hear the story. Uh, normally I have two presentations. One was a video and the next one should be my presentation. But, uh, yeah, you can go on. You can make uh, some short... It's, it's a little bit easier for the people if they uh, see some pictures. Uh, yes, maybe. Easier than to understand. Yeah, take, take the present. But we want to listen to the story. Why you started to um, uh, One Earth, One Ocean? Yeah, ten years ago, um, I was a skipper of a famous sailing boat uh, from the 60s. It was bought, uh, built in Germany for the IBM founders. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> um, everybody wants to clean lakes, rivers, and seas. That is our our goal. And this uh, famous um, sailing boat, um, I was a skipper. And uh, I was very happy to do that because on this boat, Marilyn Monroe, uh, Kennedy's all were living on this boat. Mm -hmm. So there were six different beds, all original, with leather. And, and e each night I sleep in another bed, so I sleep in the same bed like uh, Marilyn Monroe. Wow. <laughs> <That's my story. laughs> that we are very honored. <laughs> she doesn't know that. Uh, so that was the beginning. And, um, one night we drove uh, from Mekua Island, uh, a lot of storms, we go to San Diego and, and one night we drove in a plastic um, marine litter patch from, from a ship. And I thought to myself, oh, it's only one ship, I thought, the night. How many ships are on the ocean at the same time and throw everything in the water? That was the first day of one of the ocean. Ten years ago. Ten years after. <laughs> so, I think everybody knows these problems, and uh, normal, normally we can um, find solutions for plastic waste, uh, things like too much farming with algas and oil and chemicals. These are different problem fields, but I think we can solve this. We have solutions for that. There are other things like um, weapons or nuclear things in the water. This is very, very um, um, theoretical, but we could not. Um, and acidification. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, we are um, people, um, we are not talking, we are doing something. We have our uh, first step is uh, go to schools, working with universities. Second, we have own uh, laboratory in, in Kiel. Um, um, we, we, have, we make research and we, and we are building ships. This is a small one, it's called Sea Hamster. Uh, is asking now for 80, 80 of these pieces, uh, for example. Uh, Sikau is uh, now back from Asia. Last week um, comes back to Lübeck. We have some problems with, 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 the, with the customs. <laughs> they need papers. Because of the boat or the plastics you brought to Germany? We bring too much plastic from Hong Kong. Uh, Hong Kong, uh, if you go to Hong Kong and uh, talk about plastic, they don't have plastic. Mm. It's not their plastic, it's come from China. So <laughs> I want to, you know, in, uh, in Hong Kong. Uh, so it's plastic. our plastic. Yes, it we exported it years ago yes. to China. So, uh, <laughs> So um, this is a story, and the Sea Elephant is um, a project paid, uh, paid by Reutlin Stiftung. Uh, engineers are working for that. It is ready next next year, and all our solutions uh, come on a container ship. That means we don't need any certification for the ship. Uh, each container is certified. Four containers is one um, machine could um, change plastic to oil 13 tons a day. So this is a solution, uh, the big sea elephant solution for, for big cities like Hong Kong, Manila, and Jakarta. You have no place in the town, you are on an island, you don't want to burn it. So we come with the ship and, and clean it, even an island like Maldives, Seychelles. This is our idea, our concept. So may, how many people are working in your at the moment? Uh, employed are 11. 11 employees and how many volunteers? More, 100, more than 100 engineers, marine litter engineers. Uh, we have um, experts in, in, each, in each region and a few hundred members. It's, it's growing uh, very fast. And, but we, we don't go, um, we are not a marketing company, <laughs> so uh, we, we just do something. We don't talk, we do something. That's the difference to a lot of other, uh, other NGOs. Um, the sea farmer is just an ordinary fish, fish trawler we can buy uh, everywhere, and the sea elephant uh, could be ready in 2020. And I, I think one, we will have the first one. This is um, uh, the last sea hamster. is uh, paid by firma Dice from Hamburg. 
they are producing plastic bags. And our common goal is we, we collect plastic also in, in the Mekong River, in mm -hmm. uh, Kambodja, and change it back to plastic. So we don't want to go uh, to a country and, and spend money and go away. So we give the people, um, local people give them money. We want to find uh, for local problems, local solutions. And these days, uh, in, um, uh, yesterday, four governors were riding this small sea hamster. <laughs> there was four people on this boat. So this is, um, this is paid by a um, plastic company from, from, from Hamburg. Company. So the plastic bag is coming from Hamburg, yeah, the <laughs> plastic bag. Yeah, no, the, 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 the company dies uh, holding soon. They paid this, this small sea hamster for, for our common project in, in Kambodja to show everybody that it's possible to collect mm -hmm. and to change it back to plastic bags. This is a big, uh, bigger one. is coming back uh, last week from, from Asia. It's uh, mm -hmm. built up in Lübeck in these days. Next week it will be in... Um, in Kiel, and mm -hmm. next year we make a, a tour around the Baltic Sea, for, uh, researching and um, diving and collecting. This will be the sea elephant. We have no other Earth to live on. Remember, and each of us can do something. Good. Thanks a lot, and uh, maybe again an applause for this guy. <laughs> sold his company to save the oceans and I, I think it's quite impressive. I don't know if we could take a lot of uh, plastic with these technologies but because I, I don't know if how many sea hamsters we can... No, you're, you're right. <laughs> if you see one sea hamster, you're, it's, it's a little step. But first, you have a long journey means start with the first step. Secondly, we have to stop immediately to bring in more over the rivers. So we have solutions for the rivers to see uh, Mr. schulz Agnes from uh, where he is. Uh, he is building a lot of sea cows, thousands in the next time, mm -hmm. for only for Asia. For each river we, we can place. Uh, we have to stop immediately to bring in more. That means, how can we do it? We have to pay the people for collecting. If you every day go uh, and you don't know what, what at the end of the day you have money or eat, I don't want to pick up any, anything, but if you give them money, oh, something to drink or to eat, they will do that. That's first. Then we, we need a um, solution for the big cities like Hong Kong, Manila, Jakarta, and third, what NGOs like we or other one can do is clean the whole surface. Mm. What's very important in my last sentence is, it's not only food chain. If you cover over, over oceans with plastic, the production of oxygen is going down. Guillaume find out in 2016 there was 3% less production of oxygen. If you cover all our oceans with plastic, the sun is not able to come down 10 centimeters. There is no algas, no plankton, no seagrass. This is very, very important. More important at the end of the day than feed. Uh, Thanks a lot, Greta. Yeah, there is this impressive uh, number of um, plastic um, mass in our ocean, and uh, scientists estimate that. Uh, after 2050, there will be more plastic than animals in, in our oceans. And um, Anat Bauske, you're a biologist, studied here in Hamburg. You're from WWF. And um, what is your view on this problem? So could we solve it, or what should we do? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I think it's good uh, listening to all the solutions here on the table. So, so it's a real really good effort and, and looks promising uh, for that. Um, maybe you know that WWF is a worldwide network, so, so if there was a possibility to, to work in uh, especially those countries which are affected mostly by dead waste management systems like Vietnam, uh, Indonesia or uh, China or Thailand. So, so we decided, uh, besides other activities on, on a global level, but we decided to do something um, directly in, in, in those countries um, and to give an example of what we are doing in, in Vietnam is uh, that we were looking around the Mekong area talking to the official government representatives asking them where are your problems and um, so so they showed that was what's happening at the moment uh, at the moment the waste is collected but or most of the waste is collected but then it's thrown <coughs> on the reefs uh, uh, on the countryside near the river uh, because there are no facilities for treating the waste, like incineration or landfills. Um, what's happening is then in the rainy season, 
um, there is often flooding, flooding in, in those areas, so, so the waste is taken away. So, so that's uh, mostly the case uh, during the rainy season. That's that's the time when waste is entering the ocean. So, so I, I think it's very supporting having some kind of devices that fishing um, fishing the waste out of the rivers at those times because then a lot of waste is entering the oceans. What, what, when you, what we are doing, or what we found out, um, that uh, there's no separation of waste. So at first we have to separate the waste, and we have about organic share of 70%. So if, if we take out the organics uh, and the plastic, uh, there will be much less residual waste which have to be treated. So first step is to analyze where we can sell the sorted waste, like compost, <coughs> and where we can sell the plastics, and, and the other stuff. Uh, so to, to earn a bit money out of it and to pay for the se um, separate waste collection. We are now establishing, at the beginning of next year, in one city in the Mekong area, so so that now we, are, we have experts there uh, which try to find out the, the ways to save, to save the waste fractions. We earn money out of it, and then to pay from the money part of the waste management. So, so that's the project at the moment. And similar things we are doing at Fukuok, that's a tourism island uh, also from Vietnam, uh, we are doing the Philippines, and Indonesia, uh, so, so mostly similar approaches and in some cases we try to prevent this uh, single-use plastic uh, in, in the hotel or, or in, in, the, um, in the food area so that the plastic is prevented when we're staying in a hotel, that's also an activity, prevention is better than uh, recycling. Um, but one, I think one, one important thing I want to mention is that the responsibility for the packaging, uh, the responsibility lies with the consumer companies, with the large global companies which are selling their products in supermarkets like here. And uh, in those countries they do not have any problem, they are not taking the responsibility. In Germany they pay license fee if they are introducing packaging into the market. So what we are trying to implement is a system or to support the implementation together with the governments, together with the corporates and other NGOs to establish a system for extended producer responsibility. That means that the system is built up for separation and collection of waste and that this system is paid by the industry. That's very important and this, this will secure, this will secure a continuous financing of waste management. At the moment, the you know, system waste management is really underfinanced, and I doubt whether we can pay this with the earnings from the cycle. So, so the companies have to pay for it. That's, that's a more political approach on that. We are also working on a, on a local level. Um, yeah, and, and to summarize, we want to stop the waste at the source. I think that's, that's important, that the waste is not entering the rivers and, and, and then the ocean. Um, and uh, last remark, we are very uh, hopeful at the moment because the awareness of what we did is very high, the awareness about uh, plastic waste. So I hope we will get to push to, to push the governments, to push the companies towards a more, yeah, let's say, a sustainable production of plastic, but also to finance waste management. That's really crucial. They have to pay for the waste. That's uh, yeah, thanks a lot. You, we, you talked a lot about the Asian area and what you what WWF does there. So, what are your activities, for example, in Germany? Can you tell us it's more in the political way, or we will talk about politics later? Yeah, yeah. Of course, in Germany, we are supporting the activities uh, regarding recycling of plastic because, of course, single-use plastic is using a lot of energy. Um, here in Germany, not so much waste or household waste is entering the oceans because we have about around 190 to 100 percent coverage of waste, uh, of waste here, and, and it's paid by the consumer with companies. But uh, of course, we have certain some problems here in Germany. That's microplastic. Two days ago, a new study has been published that we have about uh, 360,000 tons of microplastic entering the environment, not, not only rivers and oceans, but the environment. And that's that's a lot. Um, and we have uh, we have also then, uh, in, especially from tourism, from the shipping sector, uh, plastics entering uh, in the environment. But what we do in the Baltic Sea is to recover nets. So so we've lost fishing gear or called ghost nets. We we have the activities there to identify. So we are working together with local divers because they know a lot about the, these ghost nets where they are located and they give us uh, more information and uh, just, uh, I think, two weeks ago they found a net 500 meters long, a ghost net, and we, uh, we 
recover from the sea because uh, we found a lot of birds and fish uh, that's entangled in, in those net. So we put out, and also we are searching for recycling opportunities and which, what is possible for recycling, but that's difficult. But uh, I don't think that the problem is solved here in Germany. For example, in your, present, in your previous present presentation, you showed that 35% of the plastic is going out of the cycle somewhere. And uh, so how could we find and how can we solve this? What is your political approach, for example? Yeah, okay. Uh, I forgot to mention, we have to increase the recyclability of uh, plastics here because it's mm. very bad recyclable and more than half of it of it is incinerated and not recycled. So we have to increase the rate of recycled plastic. That's very important. But uh, the, the producers of packaging have to, to do this with, together with us because they, at the moment, most of them don't uh, look for recyclability. So you have a lot of packaging products which are very badly recycled. So this is also, of course, you have to prevent packaging. There's a lot of packaging we do not need uh, and also in the reduction of single-use plastic like uh, coffee to go, uh, cups or scores and uh, single-use plastic. So, so that's what also we did activities on to reduce the amount of, of uh, plastic packaging here, here in Germany. And uh, this also to, to uh, save uh, raw material and energy. Because. Thanks, Mike Hoffman. You are working on the recycling field. And I think you should be happy now after China closed the doors for German waste. Um, does your business model is uh, a sustainable one? Because if we are working against um, um, too much packaging, so maybe your, mach your amazing machines don't have to do something in maybe 20 or 30 years. How do you think about this? Um. I'm happy about the situation today, this is true. I'm, I'm happy because uh, uh, the message uh, arrived in the population everywhere that we have a plastic problem. And very so, lately. Yes, yes, very lately because uh, everybody in Germany the last year thought, yeah, we have the dot system, everything is working, and the reality has been that most of the waste has been exported to China. Now, now it's stopped and now we have a problem, a stock problem, so uh, plastic waste is in big warehouses, there's no chance to export, and this forces industry to find solutions. And uh, so, um, going away from our technology, this is just a tool. Mm -hmm. It needs business models, this is one thing. The other thing is what uh, we heard today, that of course, uh, the industry uh, must think about how they design packaging products. But uh, to say one word to the use of plastics, the use of plastics is absolutely important. You, you cannot miss plastics. But to give you an example, we have 47% single households in Germany. Ten years ago we had 37%. This also means increasing packaging volume. You have uh, blisters, trays with uh, 10 or 5 slices of cheese or, or, or bacon and uh, you have um, functions in the, the retailer business you, you must keep the, the goods fresh, you have to distribute them how would you do it without plastic? Yeah? and uh, if you see plastic products uh, like plastic bags, waste bags if you use them to collect waste they are important, you need them. So what do we have to do? We have to make a difference between closed new products for commodity mass products. So, so uh, plastic bags are a good example. It's a perfect closed new product. From plastic bag waste, and so the plastic bag itself, it's no problem to produce a new plastic bag. This mm -hmm. is possible. And then you have Plastics, and they are the problem. Um, so the multi-layer plastics. So a big Swiss company producing coffee caps. Um, they use a plastic coverage um, for their, their coffee caps. This is impossible to recycle. They are in our pilot plant, actually in our neighbor. <laughs> and they came to us and asked us, uh, can you recycle our plastic film? And we analyzed it, and it was impossible. This is something which has to stop. 
So, so uh, this is absolutely necessary that uh, there's really a progress in designing recyclable plastic products. This is necessary. And uh, uh, anyway, if we just start to accept also in the population that we have to use more and more products made of recycled plastics, then this also helps. If we have a look to China, then China has developed the highest culture to use recycled plastics. That's the reason why they imported plastic waste. They had not enough. Here in Germany, we have 200 kilograms per citizen a year plastic waste. In, in China, it is still 60 kilograms, but it's increasing. So they have not enough volume for own collecting schemes. But uh, they have developed a recycling culture. So your Nike sports shoe or your Adidas sports shoe is made out of recycling film, plastic waste. I have an audience question for this here now. What happens with the water after cleaning the plastic and how, contam or how, how contaminated is the water? We have um, in our operation no wastewater. So we are... Not at all? No. No, we have a complete closed loop water recycling. It's part of our technology. Okay. Good. Yeah, very good. Thanks a lot. So, um, next question. Um, what is your... Um, participation to find a solution. It's the, you, you're working in the field of design, so I think this will lead us a little bit to the future to find new ways and new designs how to make packages. Um, no, not really. Um, from my point of view, we just wanted to devise a universal system that could accept any kind of uh, crash and, uh, and work with profit. Um, so, in the end, uh, this is not an incentive to continue what we're doing. Uh, this is just one of the solutions, uh, or solutions, yeah, it's not really a solution anyway. Uh, the most important part, as we said, it's uh, to stop uh, plastic getting in the uh, environment. And um, I, am, um, I have a few questions, uh, because if we implement um, recycling in these poor countries, are, we, are they going to be able to sustain it? Because we have good recycling, I think, because we are developed. So by developing the poor countries, we would solve so many problems, and I think recycling might be one of these. So going directly to the recycling might be a bit um, fast track, and uh, I was wondering if um, um, did you take in consideration this point of view? Who do you want to ask? Mr. Hoffman, probably. No, it's about Okay. Um, short yeah, I think, short yeah, answer. I think it will not be easy to do this, uh, but at the moment we are already having an informal sector collecting all the waste. It's more valuable, like PT bottles. So in Vietnam, I do not see any PT bottle on it, when this garbage leaves. Because uh, before, the, the official waste collection is coming on PT bottles or aluminum cans are, are sorted out and sold. So, so there's already recycling uh, there, but uh, not with this material, which has not so much value like foils. So, uh, so, so that's, that's a difficulty. The, the low value plastic waste to treat this because it has no value for recycling. Um, so, of course, uh, it, uh, it might be good to establish new technologies, but uh, from my perspective, those technologies have to be adapted to the local situation. Uh, um, so, so, to build up enough recycling plants and then collecting all the waste, uh, I think the, the, these poor people which are now collecting the waste will become a bit of angry because we are taking <coughs> their, their income, uh, so for the to regard I think the more a small scale solution will be better to for, for recycling, and uh, then of course this solution must be some kind of environmental friendly and also uh, that the looking at, at uh, hazardous environment for the, for the workers. This has also taken into consideration. So, so that we have a let's say the recycling activity. 
the hazardous for the people and, and also environmentally friendly. This, this has to be developed, uh, but we need a continuous financing of, of those uh, recycling activities because if the price for, let's say, recycled PT drops, then there is no much interest to sell or to collect this. And uh, from one day to the other, we will see all the bottles dying around. So you need uh, continuous, sustainable financing of waste management system. If you get a bit back from recycling, that's fine, but uh, you need a continuous financial support. Okay, thanks, Mr. Bowski. That's the question I'd like to ask to all the podium now, with the request of a short answer, please, uh, before going to your questions. Um, so mm -hmm. what is the most important task and please answer in only one or two sentences. Good. Single use and no recycling. That is not good. Mm -hmm. So we have to find solutions. Um, it's financial. We have to give people money. And at this moment, there is nothing on the street. And after that, we have to recycle it on a long term basis. Mm -hmm. Hoffmann, yeah. what is the main task to be done? Creating economic value out of the waste. If you create value, mm -hmm. you have the financing, and the problem is uh, PET. There's proven technology you can use. You can produce valuable products for textiles and so on, and for thin foils or film products, there is no technology existing. If this technology exists, and you make it uh, small scale and on location, the people can earn money. The same will happen with those collecting PET products. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Is it close? Yeah, I agree totally. I think awareness is one of the most important and uh, all the rest comes along. Okay, the rest. Do you agree with this? Yeah, here we have a question. Yes, I will get the microphone. Please pass through. And we didn't talk on the political level, so um, two weeks, no, one week ago we had a big meeting. This is a round table of the German government. <coughs> taking place in Hanover or Berlin, and we are discussing, discussing, discussing. It's um, organized by the German Ministry of Environment, and there are no results, to be honest. So, your question, please. Thank you. Maybe introduce yourself. Maybe. My name is Siegfried Schmuck. I work for Offshore Monitoring. This is an R&D company. Um, I do have a conceptual problem, and this is about my two questions. It's when we're talking about Everything what you mentioned here before is about microplastics. It's uh, taking out the, uh, yeah, the, the, the plastic bags out of the sea, which go mostly in Asia into the rivers and then to the ocean. And uh, basically also to what you said before, uh, to avoid that there is a decrease in uh, oxygen production. And we all know these scenes of, of birds who starve to death because they ingested plastics. But in the long run, increase. Which will increase. But in the long run, this will all break down to microplastics. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not really sure what is the impact of microplastics on marine life, what is the impact on the human health, and if we really want to tackle this, uh, then what we talk about is only a small part, because uh, a colleague, I think from the WWF, mentioned this study from Fraunhofer, which recently came out, which shows that uh, it's uh, 4,000 4, grams of microplastic per person in Germany versus 1,400 grams of macroplastic, which go into the ocean. So we only see one-fourth of the plastic pollution, and we only tackle one-fourth. And with the microplastic, which mostly comes from uh, abrasion from cars, tires, or bitumen, I don't see any economic value which you can generate from that. So that means the market will still not solve this problem. So the question is, do we have any negative impacts from microplastic if we have it in a food chain, if we ingest it? Um, I don't know. I would like to get some answers there. I mean, I, maybe it's too early because I only, I'm only aware that there's a lot of studies out there. No, Sorry, it was a bit long, but uh, it's a bit complex as well. No, we know that. And so on the level of the United Nations Environment Program, there is a working group working especially on this. And for example, the Alfred Wegener Institute in Bremerhaven, they are looking into muscles. But I think Mr. Bausch can tell, as a biologist, 
a little bit more about the details in very short sense, please. Yeah, okay, I try. Um, uh, yes, you're right. At the moment, we don't know uh, about the real effects of microplastics. Um, what we know is that if we have high concentration of microplastic, we have negative effects on organism uh, that's coming from the laboratory. Uh, for, for, and also microplastic is predicting um, uh, or, or accumulating hazardous substances in the sea or it's containing these substances. But whether this is a, an important part of hazardous substances or harmful substances for, for uh, people, for humans, that's, that's I'm sure at the moment, whether there are other parts where we can take uh, harmful substances. Um, so you know, it depends where the plastic is swimming. Yeah, uh, so, so, so that, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's an open question. Of course, it's very difficult to, to get this uh, microplastic. Uh, for primary microplastic, which you actively are adding to products, uh, you can reduce it by not doing so. So, like the cosmetics, it should not be added there, or the technical uh, products. But if it's coming from rear and here, uh, like from Hong Kong, uh, it's more difficult. So, to, to build products which are more durable so so that we do not have this kind of emissions from from yeah, raising uh, uh, from hard times and textiles so, so that's that's a bit more more difficult uh, but of course you should not release this into the environment and it's it's uh, everywhere now at, at the moment in this should so uh, yeah i think when we make the decision in the warehouse what we buy where it's coming from uh, so when the tomato is coming from South Spain, there is a lot of microplastic produced on the road. Instead, if you buy it on the farm, on the local farm, from the local farmer, I think we can do a lot of things which we broadly show at Tambo Clan Creek uh, from the last week of September. So there is a next question, Roland. Yes, I'm here. Uh, Mass Johnson from the MS Mars, it's a small marine consultancy company doing things with marine technologies. Um, one question, as a consumer, it can be difficult to identify products that actually have uh, recycled plastic in it. Um, I've tried to raise the question with the EU to see if there could be made a label or something that actually identifies which products it, uh, uh, actually contains recycled plastic so that I, as a consumer, could actually choose the products rather than just going blindfolded into the shops and buy whatever plastics are I need or have to buy. So, is there done anything? Uh, apparently, EU is not doing anything because they believe there are too many labels already, but uh, could it be something for the WWF to introduce? I know Denmark, some of our NGOs have managed to gather with the manufacturers to make uh, separate labels uh, where the NGOs vouch for the products. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, we have in Germany the Blue Angel for, for plastic with recycled content. So so that's available in Germany and other countries. I don't know whether we have the European the EU equal label, whether this is also for recycled products. For packaging, it's different. We have it with PET bottles, that's possible in some cases, but not with other from packaging. That's what yeah, but I, I want to add that, for example, to your question as well, uh, and what you, um, Mr. Hoffman, already said, that the mixture of the plastic is the big problem, and Japan um, uh, forbid to make, to produce mixtures of uh, different sorts of plastic. So they, I think they allow only six sorts of plastic, so it's easier to recycle. Is this part of the solution? I think we have to make a difference between um, high value plastics where you as a, a consumer really uh, want to have uh, purity or a very clean product. Uh, I think um, the first step to, to, to get out uh, of the the waste, the, the mass plastics, the big volume, is to, to focus on what we call commodity products. So the products you look at, at waste paper. Today the recycling rate of waste paper worldwide is over 70%. Worldwide. The, the breakthrough technology has been the de-inking, so getting rid of the, of the printing colors. But look at the products. Uh, this industry focused completely on commodity mass products, copy paper, and uh, all these 
since newspapers, paper. You don't find it in photographic papers, yeah? So, and I think to, to achieve really um, a big step is focusing on the commodity products. So the products which you have in a big, big volume stream. And this is especially film products. Film is one of the largest material streams in waste. Uh, really, it's absolutely the biggest waste stream is film, or you call it foil. Mm. So you, you know what I mean. And if we focus on these products, we will have big, big effects and can be fast. And then we have to go to the lower volume products. We have to do it step by step. We have to focus on the mass to reduce the volume and then step by step. And this is, in my personal opinion, um, the most efficient way. Okay, thanks a lot, Michael Hoffman. So the time is running. I think we... Well, we have a few, two, three questions we can do. Five, six Two minutes. we can do, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> two we can do. Thank you very much for Matthias Keller from the fish processing industry. Uh, one question to the organizer. Why the hell do we have used this plastic we have hanging around our neck in an Try it, not uh, humid climate. I, I think it's the best I can, way. I can give you the answer. But you, you will uh, use it next year, year again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, no, don't I, doubt that. I don't doubt that. I don't doubt that. We tried this, but there is not really a practical solution out there. But, uh, and this is also in my announcement for the way out, we want to recycle this. So I have seen, seen, seen the box. box in the 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 box yes. so no excuse. It's not a good excuse. Sorry. This is... Something you should think and you can start easily without IT technology. <coughs> Thank you. Justin, we'll, we'll talk about that in five minutes so you can mind, uh, make up your mind. <laughs> Is there another question right here? One last question, yeah. Thank you. Um, my name is Dirk. I'm working for a bag company and our aim is to only use recycled ocean plastic. So it goes a little bit back to giving waste a commercial value what we've discussed so what and my question goes to mr hoffman and you said earlier that you have find ways to decontaminate fishnet because everything what i've learned is that fishnet is highly toxic and hence harmful for the human body and we would not be able to use it in textiles or fabrics I'm not a, a fishnet specialist. We, we sold uh, our technology to, what I told before, to a company producing new plastics from fishnets. And I will ask the operator about this. I cannot give you any question, but I didn't hear about any problems they have. The name of the company is Plastics in, with double X in Denmark. And uh, they are operating very well and uh, are producing high-performance products from fishnets. Günther, take the, the, moment, take the mic. Collecting a lot of plastics and uh, we think that all of them could be um, find a new uh, life in, uh, as a new product. And, but, but fishnet uh, is really new for me because uh, we are we're looking for that worldwide to find somebody to, to take the fishnet. We, if it yeah. But it, it would, be, would, be, would be good if we, if we got the contact. Thank you. And do you have clients for all the collected plastics? Um, that's, that's a question we have uh, <laughs> in the beginning. We're just starting, for example, mm -hmm. in Kambodja. Mm -hmm. And there is a, a mo more level uh, kind of um, uh, recycling. Okay. These people in, in these countries uh, don't throw everything in the water. They, they take everything out they need. Mm -hmm. The next people come at the end it's on, on, a, on a hill and, and the family lives, lives on, on, on the hill. But uh, we, we start now um, with, with our project with um, Sund Holding that we, uh, from, from Hamburg, that we want to collect it and change it back into plastic bags and not to um, take the plastic from Asia, put it to, to Hamburg. To, so we want to do it locally. Bye. Thanks okay. a lot. So maybe plastic is not the biggest, but it's a very visible problem. And thanks to the organizers to take this here on the uh, onto the program because it's really good and easy to discuss how we handle this uh, kind of um, of material. And uh, thanks for the panel. Thanks for the, to the audience. And I think Carsten will make some closing remarks today. Thanks for coming yes. and. Have a Thank nice you evening. very much. And don't forget to put your plastic badge in the bag, please. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs>
So this was the first day of CDEFCON. I have to say thank you for all people coming today. Thank you for all speakers. Thank you for my lovely moderators, Monique and Roland. I thank think you. you have done an amazing job. And maybe you also can thank clap you. a little bit you. your hands. <laughs> so thank you for the question. You are totally right. Um, but half of it is plastic, the other half, the lanyards, it's recycled uh, ocean plastic. So maybe this is at least one step uh, forward. And we also would kindly ask you for those not coming tomorrow, uh, just to put it in the boxes so that we can do a proper recycling for um, these things. Um, yeah, so then I only can say it's the end of the conference, uh, it's, it's, it's not the, the end of the, the speeches, uh, but it does not, it's not the end of the conferences. So we have a nice reception outside now. So grab one or two beers, stay here for an hour or so. And then we have, maybe you can show it on the website, we have also um, for the speakers, but not only for the speakers, also I, I still have uh, enough tickets for those who want to join our speakers uh, uh, dinner at um, the Alster Lake, so talk to me. You are invited, uh, just uh, take a card and then, then join us. I think we can host there around 80, yeah, yeah, this is, uh, we can host there 80 people and would like to spend a nice evening with you and then we can also deepen some of the, the discussions. So, and the last thing I have to say, um, you can't do an event like this uh, without uh, financial support. We, are, we have to pay for this room for the days. We have to pay for uh, many things. And uh, I ask local authorities, local people for sponsorship. It was really hard to do so. That's why I'm very happy that our friends from Finland, Wetzele, uh, supported us doing this. So maybe uh, also clap a hand uh, for, uh, for, for Wetzele. <laughs> And um, yesterday, especially to, to Stefan Knott, uh, who really supported us. Um, and on the way out, maybe, uh, Jonas, uh, you can show what uh, the guys uh, in Finland uh, are doing now. It looks a little bit that they want to destroy their uh, company. Um, <laughs> uh, so this is their new image campaign. Um, I think it's really amazing, and maybe on, on your way out, you stay for another 30 seconds and watch it. Have a good evening, and I would be happy to see you they all should, uh, in the evening. Continue. Thank you very much. Thank you. future's not what it used to be. The city was a place you could be sure of getting work. People flocked here by the millions. The promise of a better life. Fast forward to your parents' time building a home and raising a family. And as you grew, so did the city, with waves of change, our lifestyles evolved, the things that excited us, the way we consume, faster and faster. But the city wasn't built to grow like this, and the cracks started to show. Resources stretched to breaking point, weight buckling the foundation. Our imagined future, a fading mirage, a broken city broken dream.
change needs to come. The city's problems can be solved on the ocean. The environment depends on it. Infrastructure depends on it. Our children's quality of life depends on it. Our journey with the sea is just beginning. It's time for a worldwide awakening on an oceanic scale. <laughs>